You two sings heaven on earth. I need it now. I'm sick of all this hanging around. And then Bono goes on to sing about all the things he is sick of. If the sanctuary is in heaven and we are here on earth, what difference does it make to those who can't even grasp the concept of heaven because of all the sick things that humankind created in God's image perpetuate? In the years of the church, what have we done to the least of these in comparison with all the pointing towards the end game of the second coming? Because to correctly define sanctuary, perhaps active, positive, demonstrative examples are needed from those who choose to worship in God's sanctuary here on earth, so others can see it as it is in heaven. Offering information for your mind. Enabling transformation for your heart. Sabbath School U. A weekly dialogue exploring God's Word and its application for today's world. I'm Brendan Albury and this is Sabbath School University. In today's discussion we have new participants joining us uh, from our left I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself and tell us where you're coming from my name is Abraham Henry and I'm from the one and only Brooklyn New York mm -hmm. all right all right. all right all right my name is Jason Francis and even though I don't have a British accent I am from England Manchester England UK Manchester United is my team so much y'all know that you know what <laughs> you're saying hey, go Manchester <laughs> and I'm Jameson Wallington coming from Southern California Excellent, excellent. We are, we're glad to have you here, guys. Before we begin today's uh, lesson, Jason, can you please kindly uh, pray for us yes, and uh, read the scriptural text afterwards? Okay, let's uh, bow his for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we're just uh, we're so thankful for this opportunity to come together and discuss your word, uh, the important topic of sanctuary, God. And I pray that your spirit will reign in this place as we have this uh, discussion. Lord, direct the conversation. Lord, I pray for those who are watching or listening, Lord, that they can be blessed by uh, this episode of Sabbath uh, School University, Lord, and that you will just have your will and way, Father God. Uh, uh, please reign supreme in this place, God. We look forward to hearing from you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to read uh, from the Holman Christian Standard Bible from Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. And it reads, uh, These serve as a copy and shadow of the heavenly things. As Moses was warned when he was about to complete the tabernacle, for God said, Be careful that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. Amen. I want to ask you guys. What does sanctuary mean to you personally? How would you define sanctuary? Anyone? Hmm. Uh, sanctuary is a place where God dwells with his people. And that is not confined to a physical location. It can be a physical location, mm -hmm. but they can also be a body of believers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I just like the whole, you know, sanctuary is a good term, but I like tabernacle as well. Because mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. kind of, it, tabernacle is the meeting place. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. that whole interaction, like this is where, and I don't think it's just humanity. I think even the other heavenly beings, they go to a sanctuary to meet with God. So I think it, it speaks a lot to the presence of God. So to me, that is, is sanctuary. Yeah, I think building upon the two of you guys there is sanctuary with that relationship with God. You know, yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. about the meeting place and dwelling with God and having this this um, connection with God, this relationship, this 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 uh, unity with God. Excellent. That's great answers, guys. Good, great answers. In the book of Genesis, chapter one, if you turn there with me, Jameson, is it possible that you can read for us Genesis chapter one quickly from verse 31 going into chapter two on sure. to verse three. 31 to two, three. Yes. Then God saw everything that he had made and ind indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Now, thinking about your 
personal definitions. I'm yeah, sure yeah, some yeah. of you gave some biblical references to the definition of sanctuary. Mm. Knowingly of the fact that God created the heavens and the earth in six days and then he rested on the seventh day. If the sanctuary was constructed for direct fellowship with God, would Eden have been the first sanctuary? Anyone? It seems to be. I mean, you know, just reading it, um, mm -hmm. the creation story in a whole is is for God to have his creatures, his creation, you know, humans be with him. You know, and if we go off of our, re our definition of dwelling with God, God creates and God wants to dwell with us then. If the Garden of Eden was constructed mm -hmm. for fellowship mm -hmm. with God, what about after they left Dr. the garden? Uh, Dr. Davidson, and he actually, we had this whole class, Doctrine of the Sanctuary, and we went through this, and and, um, and scripture kind of suggests that they continue to go to at least the outside of the of Eden to still worship God in that place. Matter of fact, when you go into uh, Genesis, and it talks about how, how Cain and Abel were supposed to be um, offering up gifts and offering up sacrifices unto God, you know, uh, it suggested that they were offering these sacrifices sacrifices right outside the gate to the Garden of Eden mm. because it was still understood that God's presence is in there so when it comes to worship the closest we can get is right on the outskirts even though they have this angel that they can look up to and see that God's God's presence is in there this is where we've been separated from interesting you know I, I just find it amazing that um, the psalmist says in uh, chapter 32 of 7 David he says, you are my hiding place. Mm -hmm. You will preserve me from trouble. Mm. And then I think about Adam and Eve, how they hid from God mm. in the Garden of Eden. Wow. Yeah. And yet they still had an opportunity to dwell with God outside the Garden of Eden. Mm. So it really doesn't matter about if we're in the sanctuary. We are the sanctuary as long as we allow God mm -hmm. to dwell in us and with mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the sanctuary is differential to everyone's personal experience. Mm -hmm. Take away Adam and Eve. What about yourself? Has there ever been a time where you feel as if you can't find God inside the physical building? Mm. I yeah. mean, I know a lot of systematic theologians talk about the invisible and the visible church right. <laughs> have you ever had an encounter with God that was so powerful it had nothing to do with being inside the physical building mm -hmm. what would you say to yourself and to those watching I mean is it really important to be at church in a congregation every Sabbath uh, or is it just as important as having a personal dwelling communion with God I think it's important to recognize that we need individual worship like yeah. you're saying, you know, one on one yeah. time with God. Mm. But there is also, you know, we just read it in the in the end of Genesis one, the beginning of Genesis two, where there's also a special time with God that we need to come together mm -hmm. as a community. Also, um, there's a book by uh, Lillian, Dr. Lillian Dukan, in tune with God, that is fantastic. She talks about Solomon's temple okay. and the layout of it and where the musicians were, mm. and says that you know there was there was nobody blocking the the altar you know they didn't have the soloist up in front of the altar they didn't have all the all the attention was focused on on worshiping god and so i think you know this one day a week rejuvenation charges our batteries to go out and then continue on with our personal individual worship uh with god throughout the week mm -hmm. that's a good point mm -hmm. jameson that actually brings us to our next question because we can see in exodus and hebrews clearly if you look at the similarities two mm -hmm. can be seen between the sanctuary all right and and the worship what should we not expect between the heavenly sanctuary yeah. and the earthly sanctuary mm. taking a look at hebrews chapter 8 of course verse 2 and 5 let's go to biblical references yeah, yeah, jameson yeah. you can read hebrews chapter 8 verse 2 and 5 abraham you can read exodus chapter 25 verse 8 and 9 and jason you can read exodus chapter 27 and verses 8 Okay. Well, I'm flipping here, but I'm... <laughs> Take your time. Take I'm your time. taking my time. It was uh, Hebrews 8. Yes. Which yes. verses again? Hebrews 8, verses 2 and 5. Perfect. Exodus. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected, and not man. Verse 5. Who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. 
For he said, see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Okay. And Abraham? Exodus chapter 25, verses 8 and 9. 25, verses 8 and 9. All right, here we go. It says, let them construct a sanctuary for me Hmm. that I may dwell Hmm. among them according to all that I am going to show you as the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furniture, just so you shall construct it. Okay. And And it was Exodus 27. What were the verses? Verse 8. You've got it. Oh, just verse 8. Okay. Construct the altar with boards so that it is hollow. They are to make it just as it was shown to you on the mountain. Okay. So what similarities between the earthly sanctuary and the copy of the heavenly sanctuary can be seen? It's not the exact same size, same dimensions, but it's, it's it's a replica it's a it's as as we read it's a pattern it's a shadow it's mm-hmm. it's a resemblance of what god showed moses to build in that wilderness excellent excellent and mm-hmm. what should we not expect that it's a place that we can do and build it however we want oh. because it's mm-hmm. a yeah. it's okay. it's it's exact architecture was structured mm-hmm. by god's plan mm-hmm. and his revelation to moses on the mountain mm-hmm. and so he does everything in obedience and it just goes to show you that there's blessings in the sanctuary simply because of obedience by the author of it mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. so we might be utensils in it however yeah. we're not the author of it oh, mm-hmm. because god mm-hmm. is the author of it mm-hmm. excellent excellent yeah. it's amazing when you think about our bodies Mm. Uh, considered the temples of the Lord. Yeah, mm-hmm. And yeah. this must be a dwelling place for yes, God as well. And right. Sometimes we feel as if we can do whatever we want that's well, true. <laughs> with that's our true. temples yeah. and our sanctuaries. And that's yeah. why we miss out on the blessing. We miss out on that spiritual experience mm-hmm. because we want to do what we want to do yeah, with right. God's dwelling place. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's so true because it, 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 Jason, it brings the whole idea that there ought not be a sense of ownership to do whatever we want to do with God's house. That's right. right. Because we don't dictate what goes on with God's house. God ought to dictate what goes on with his house because it's not our house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not our house. It's mm-hmm. God's house. Yeah. It's God's house. And I also feel as if it, it also translates to the way that we should treat other people. Because mm-hmm. we feel as if we just, I just represent Jason when I'm talking to the lady at the grocery store. So mm-hmm. I don't need to be nice. I don't, I can be rude if I want to, mm-hmm. but really you're, we're representatives of God's presence in places. You know, wow. we should be reflecting wow. his love. We are the wow. tabernacle now. Wow. So what could have been expected of the tabernacle in the old days now should be expected of us today. So when we walk places and when we speak to other people, we should be showing and just imbuing the love of God to other mm. people, yeah. showing his grace, showing his mercy, showing his kindness. Because, you know, we can't disuse uh, the vessel of God, which is what we are now. That's actually a good point, which brings me to an illustration <laughs> that I remember, uh, well, not really an illustration, it's actually a real story of Mm. a young lady I met a few years ago, um, no older than 16 years old of age, and uh, she was outside the church week after week, hesitant of wanting to come on the inside. Mm. But every time I saw her on the outside of the church, she was reading her scripture, she was reading her uh, the hymns and singing in the corner, dressed appropriately, but she refused to come into the church, okay? And she says that there's just a better presence that I feel right here with mm. God and myself than I feel inside that sanctuary, inside that church, okay? Mm. It doesn't matter what the name of the church was. She felt better in her small area. Wow. You know, I didn't give my definition in the beginning, but if I had to think about what sanctuary means thinking about this story i would have to say a consecrated area Mm. and that Mm. brings me to our next question how is our belief in the workings of the sanctuary demonstrated outside of the sabbath Mm. anyone Mm. think about this now yeah Uh, for some Sanctuary means just going to church, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether it be uh, on a Saturday or a Sunday for them. Sanctuary means just going to church one time out of the week, a normal service. They sing, they pray, they praise, and then they go home. But is that the definition of sanctuary? Well, 
when you look at the sanctuary, the sanctuary before the fall of man is a place where God dwells. Yeah. However, after the fall of man, it's a place where he eradicates sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the sanctuary being a place where God dwells, I believe it's also a location specifically where God ministers to his people. Right. And it's where he shares a word. And if that's a place where God shares a word, that is specifically a place where we realize that God does not only share his word within the confinements of four walls, okay. but we are actually the spoken word of God. God spoke us into existence which now speaks that we are now the sanctuary going out into the world as Jason said earlier because the Bible actually says when it closes off in the Gospels the last text in the Gospels in uh, John chapter 21 verse 25 says and there are so many other things which Jesus did mm. which if they were not written mm -hmm. in detail I suppose that even the world itself would not contain a book that would be written mm. now I argued for years with this text because I believe that anybody could shadow Jesus write down everything he did and put into a book that yeah. would be easy but then I realized the reason why no book could contain all the things that Jesus did is because he is simply still doing it mm. he is in us he is the indwelling in us he lives in our lives he saturates every area everything we do everything we say okay. and if we become the living walking sanctuary we can literally step into people's lives and into people's presence Right. and just bless people yes. and just and share a word where yeah. we now bring the sanctuary this is how the work of the gospel is going to be finished because some people will never step foot into our four doors right. so my, I, it's very controversial we can hand out tracks we can do evangelistic meetings we can speak to people but some people may never accept those invitations we've got to bring that sanctuary wherever we go and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ then the Bible says and this gospel shall be brought into all the world then the end shall come mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's excellent that you know yeah. Paul often says that Christians as a corporate body, body, for example, the church, and as individuals constitute a temple, you know, of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the implications of such a stand to our lives and conduct, both individually and corporately? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think about it, corporately could sometimes be misinterpreted it as corporation mm. Mm. that's true you, understand? Mm. you know we we have so many yeah. organized churches mm -hmm. how would you differentiate that being a collective corporate embodiment of the holy spirit as a dwelling place bodies mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and the difference between organizations and where's that fine line mm. let's be real where's yeah, the fine yeah, yeah. line no it's true Where, where's the fine line you know brendan you just kind of said it let's be real oh, and be i i think that's exactly what we need mm -hmm. um and what abraham was saying earlier too was was this we take god to people that don't want to come to the organization mm -hmm. you know i mean it's 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 a challenge sometimes to to walk that line and 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 i'm i fear sometimes that we just were we're a certain person when we're sitting in mm. our man-made sanctuaries and then we leave and we forget about yeah. that we just dwelt with god yeah. but we still are dwelling with god yeah mm -hmm. you know it's it's mm -hmm. a I like that. Mm -hmm. it's a balancing act you're walking the line you know as i'm i'm dwelling with god but i don't just i don't shake the pastor's hand afterwards I and then leave god at the church mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so I think we need to go out and we need to follow Christ's example and you know uh, be with people and, and engage with people and, and help people where we can and when we can and that's where people see God mm -hmm. through our, our following Jesus' example mm -hmm. yeah. I heard a minister of the gospels speak about something about a consecrated area a mm -hmm. hiding place, a dwelling place a small space but do not allow yourselves to be boxed in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I didn't want to ah. open that up, but <laughs> how many times do we misinterpret a consecrated area yeah. right. towards boxing ourselves in mm -hmm. to this experience that God really wants us to, to have? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All because we limit mm. the furnishings of our sanctuary. Wow. Mm. The furnishings mm. of our sanctuary, when I look at Exodus chapter 40, someone please read Exodus chapter 40 verses 9 for me quickly yes, it is 40 first verse one nine. that finds it can read it first verse nine that's right i take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it consecrated along with all its furnishings so that it will be holy hmm. okay so we're talking about consecrating a tabernacle mm -hmm. and everything that's in it a furnishings after it's been built and edified and making it holy right mm-hmm Let's apply that to our lives, right. yeah. okay? Yeah. This body mm -hmm. is a temple. The furnishings yeah. are my organs, yeah. my mind, mm -hmm. my body, 
my 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 spirit, my eyes, where it says, mm, "Yeah, <laughs> what yeah. the eye beholds." Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to be careful what your eye, you know, envisions mm-hmm. or sees yeah. or looks at because it's a sure. gateway to the soul. Uh. So if this is the furnishings of my body. Mm-hmm. How do I give it to God completely without mm. boxing myself in? Mm. 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 It's yeah. a good question. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think, I think it goes back again to a relationship concept. You know, my wife and I have been married three and a half years. We're in an intimate relationship. Mm. Are we willing to be in an intimate relationship with God to the point of when I'm not with my wife, you know, I'm still with her. Mm. And it's it's so important for us to take that concept of being with God literally. I think sometimes we're very good at, at theorizing it away. You know, we say the words, but we don't really eat the words and mm-hmm. swallow them. But to be with God is, is just it, to be with God. I'm in an yeah. intimate relationship with God. Hmm. Yeah. You know, sanctuary is such a very profound topic oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know sanctuary is such a profound topic and when I look at this lesson that we're going over mm-hmm. you know we each have a different interpretation based mm-hmm. on you know the inspiration of the Holy Spirit it has to hit home right? and when I say it has to hit home for each of us we have our own personal encounter with the Holy Spirit right. and we all found it in a consecrated and dwelling place mm-hmm. and there are times along our spiritual journey Christian journey mm-hmm. we sometimes prohibit ourselves from coming to the climax of worship mm-hmm. and tabernacle with God yeah. all because we forget to furnish mm-hmm. the, the tabernacle or set it up the way that God yeah. asked us uh-huh. to build yeah. right. the, yeah. the sanctuary all yeah. because we're fighting him and when he says to lay down this pillar yeah. and set this foundation uh-huh. we're doing everything that we think is right for our lives mm. how can we allow God to make us the perfect dwelling place mm. Mm. I see that you guys are stumbling. You're thinking, but We're how? Thinking it through these, uh, I mean, but, but, that but is the let's question. Let's be real. Though. How can yeah. we m- make ourselves the perfect dwelling place yeah. for God? In in our sinful nature, yeah. of course. And I think that's one of the bigger things because it's like in our sinful nature, it's difficult to because I mean you know there's a lot of stuff that God wants us to do that we just honestly don't want to do. You know, it's like you know God says you know put this thing out of take this out of your life, mm-hmm. and that's hard, and you're grappling with yourself. Yeah. And I think that's where. Uh, the concept of, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is what's making you a sanctuary. You're not the sanctuary just because you called yourself the sanctuary. You know, I'm a sanctuary now. You know, I, I've got my credentials here. You know, it's literally the Holy Spirit that comes into you. And I think a lot of it just comes from honestly submitting to the way that God is trying to clean us out through his spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, so when, because when you have that relationship, even I like how you're using the, the scenario with you and your wife. I've been with my wife for, it's about to be five years now. It's going to yeah, be man, five man. years. Mm-hmm. And thank God, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and this just there's certain things that you know especially single guys you know the stuff that you don't think that you're ever going to want to do like mm-hmm. I, I never thought I would want a minivan well. you know I never in a <laughs> million <laughs> years would have thought you'd yeah. see Jason driving a minivan yeah. but you know I, I engage into the in, enter into this relationship with my wife and the more I grow to love her and to care about you and as our intimacy is developing and growing and we begin to have children I start to realize that although this was an important thing about myself this relationship I have with my wife and this family unit that we're building together Mm -hmm. is more important than me so now i will take this piece this this sacrifice of this smaller car that i've always wanted and i'll I'll get a minivan i'm okay with that Mm -hmm. and i think that as we tabernacle with the lord and he's making us into a a better representation of him thing will just grow out of a lot of the you will grow into being the best sanctuary that we can be Mm -hmm. because his spirit and that intimacy will just be changing us yeah. And, and I, f- I feel that the sanctuary, when we speak about us as a sanctuary, I feel like the sanctuary is a bringing back to God. And, and what I mean by that is when God created us, he created us in his image and in his likeness. This is what the Bible says in Genesis. However, I've come to realize that when sin entered into the world, we became a little less like him. Mm. Day by day, moment by moment, mm-hmm. just as sin begins to saturate our lives. And I believe that by virtue of us being a sanctuary God told 
God told Moses to model the sanctuary exactly how he did in heaven by mm -hmm. specific, specific uh, prescription. Now, when God works on us, God tells us by specific design exactly how he wants to make us and right. mold us. You know, we can't share and minister to others until we become exactly what God wants us to be. And I don't mean arriving at a place of perfection, but merely allowing God to do this good work in us and mm -hmm. allowing him to faithfully complete it. God has to be willing to do things in our lives and begin to change our lives and begin to minister in our lives and the more that God rids us of the clutter and the dirtiness and the filthiness I believe we become a less restricted vessel that the blood of Jesus can flow so much more easier right mm -hmm. right yeah I think it it involves just spending time with God mm -hmm. you know we talked about the individual worship and the corporate worship and the individual worship you know it can be hard on a daily basis to carve out time yeah to spend with God. You know, you have family, you have work, you have school, you mm -hmm. have whatever the pressures are. It's so Definitely. hard to, to find that time to tabernacle, to, to dwell, to be with God. But I think, you know, like you're saying with, with being married, mm -hmm. you've, you've made time to, to court your wife and, and to date her, you know, or to marry her and, mm -hmm. and you, you made time. And so I think with, with following that analogy to make time mm -hmm. is where we start to find God's will and how to allow him into our hearts to cleanse us to, to purify us to remove our disobedience our separation and to say god i'm here dwell in me mm -hmm. yeah right. yeah and oh. no go on <laughs> now just got me in the topic i can yeah. run with it now <laughs> we'll, clo we'll, close with, we'll close with you jason we'll close with you no just thinking about what you were saying about how we make time for the things that we really care about we do and a lot of people oh you know i just i don't think i can get up enough early in the morning to have devotion well then right. do it in the evening before you go to sleep or pick a time in the middle of the day you know the the desire to spend time with god should be at, at such a high level adam and eve um, when they got kicked out of the presence of, of God, you know, at, at the beginning of time when they when they had to leave the Garden of Eden. You know, I don't like the way that movies depict this usually because usually you see them. They leave the Garden of Eden and the rest of the world just looks terrible. I was watching yeah, a cartoon yeah. with my daughter the other day and I just couldn't I couldn't uh, believe how terrible the rest of the world. But, but the rest of the world wasn't it was still beautiful. It was still God's creation. Mm. The real problem was that now they had to leave the presence of God and that was like death to them mm. and they would never want to do that. If we can have that same passion for the presence of God, then when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we're going to want to do is spend time with the Lord. Amen. The first thing we're going to want to do before we go to bed is spend time with God. And so I think, uh, yeah, we make time for the things that we care about, and that dwelling place and that tabernacling with God will become a priority. It was a wonderful lesson, uh, the sanctuary, great discussion. And if you would like to join in the discussion, visit our Facebook page off the link of our website at www.sabbathschoolu.org. That's www.sabbathschool, the letter U, dot org. For Sabbath School University, I'm Brendan Albury. We'll see you next week.